Hello there and welcome to an updated apartment and garden tour. Winter is almost over, it's getting warmer, days are getting a little bit longer, so I thought I'll take the opportunity to show you how my plants cope with winter, whether they survived. So, while we're out here, might as well start off with the garden, right? So it's been about, uh, and I, I'm just gonna keep watering and I hope it's not gonna be too noisy for you guys, but it's been about half a year now that I've lived at this new apartment and these plants moved out here on day one. So they've had about half a year of growing out here, but the half of the year that has the worst conditions, let's say. So I wasn't expecting all too much from these plants, but to be honest, I'm actually really, really happy with how well they've coped during winter. Now, of course, winter in Sydney is fairly mild. Um, I mean, today is a beautiful wintry day and I'm walking around over here in a t-shirt. Can easily go up to above 20 degrees during the day, but the night times can get really, really cold. I think the lowest it went down to um, in the middle of winter was I think four degrees, but this year winter started quite early. Like May was really, really cold. Usually May isn't that cold. May was actually colder than August is uh, at the moment. So um, I feel like hopefully we've gone through the worst already and the worst part of winter is over. So I'm getting really excited. That doesn't mean that there isn't enough time for something to go wrong with these plants still, but so far they've actually survived quite well. So let's have a quick look at some of these. Over here we've got an Anthurium Bosworth Beauty. Now it's been, you know, it's not the prettiest leaf, but given that this unfurled during winter, I'm actually really impressed. And it is growing an inflow over here. I haven't done anything with the inflow, but just the fact that it is growing one, is just a sign that it's actually quite happy. Right next to it, I've got this um, Philodendron Martianum, also called Fat Boy, I think, because of the thick petioles over here. I'm really loving that, and I gave it a moss pole. You can see some of the roots coming through over here. And if I turn it around, you can also see some oops, spider webs and some roots headed towards the moss pole over here. And I just found these cute pots at Ikea. They were like, I don't know, they, they were really cheap. I think they were like 10 bucks or something like that. And they hook into my, uh, my fence. So that's nice. And then just over here, I've got a Xanadu as well. That's just hanging on my, my garden door over here. I don't know. I was really inspired by the Warringah Mall. Um, they had a lot of Xanadus, so I'm hoping this can fill out a little bit and become really nice and bushy. And then right in front of me, we've also got a new addition that only uh, joined me like maybe a month ago or so. Um, this actually used to be my little succulent display already about three years ago when I was still living in uh, my shared house. And uh, when I then moved into my apartment, I gave this to Tim. And Tim gave it back because they're doing a garden remodeling. By the way, Tim is filming right now, so hey Tim. It's kind of weird talking about him in third person when he's literally right, behind, right, right there. Um, but yeah, he gave it back because they're doing a garden remodel and it didn't really suit the aesthetic anymore. But you saw that in my, in my um, garden tour the other day when I added a whole lot of palms into my garden as well. I haven't done anything with this. I just put it in this spot because it's getting the most light. Um, but I think I wanna kind of redo it. First of all, I'm really worried about the cactus. I've almost touched it like eight times already. Um, so I don't necessarily want the cactus to be here. I think I'm gonna get rid of the cactus and I'm gonna just replace it with a few more succulents. Let's move through these moss poles then because they're obviously like the main thing in this garden over here. This is Philodendron ernestii and I had the least hopes for this plant. I knew this was not gonna have a good time outside, but it honestly is just taking up too much space. Um, and my space indoors is really precious, so I really gotta prioritize which plants I wanna see grow indoors. Um, and that just wasn't really worth the real estate. So I went out here, I don't know, I, I suppose it will recover in spring, I might just, chop it and um, propagate it and then have like four or five cuttings growing up a new moss pole instead but as long as it's not dead 
that's okay. I think it's just a whole lot of cosmetic damage um, on the leaves, but it is what it is. Next to it, I've got um, my Monstera Adansonii, and that's the bottom part of the large Adansonia that we're gonna see later on. And it's really happy. I mean, yeah, it's growing really nice leaves. Um, so cannot complain about that. And then next to it, we've got my uh, Monstera Pinatipatita. There's two shoots on there. You can see the bottom one is still here. The top shoot has lost a lot of its bottom leaves uh, over winter. So you can see this empty stem over here. And you can see that the latest leaf is going yellow or like the lowest leaf is going yellow again. So it has dropped a lot of leaves, but kind of from here upwards is the new growth that has grown outside. And you can see how small the internodal spacing has become. And it's really giving me this uh, growth pattern that I expect from the Pinati Patita and it's like a little fan kind of you know almost like a bird of paradise would so it's definitely maturing out here it's giving me larger leaves but these leaves are also a bit stressed from the sun but not a failure no? try to grow this uh, plant in indoors for about two years and all it really did is just grow really leggy like it never really started maturing so I think it's still a success Next to it, we've got my Cebu uh, Blue. Not so blue anymore, it loses the bluish sheen as it matures. Now, this was actually at the top of the moss pile, but it's really windy up here, right? There's more protection down here, so the leaves at the top were just bashed around, like thrown around by the wind. So they got really damaged, so I cut them, and then I'm just waiting for the plant to reshoot. Um, yeah. Next to it, we've got my Monstera Siltipicana, the regular form, not the El Salvador. And that's a plant I've had for a long time now, three years or so. And it never really matured. Like it's just growing up moss poles and I do chop and extends, but it's not really changing that much. So I thought might as well put it out here. Why not? <laughs> um, right next to that we've got the bottom part of this Cebu blue over here so this pole used to live on top of here right? and it's doing okay but given that this is the bottom part of this pole over here the leaves at the bottom would be really really old right so the leaves at the bottom could be like two years old so they're definitely giving up now um, obviously being outside wouldn't help but even in an indoor setting these leaves only have so much of a lifespan and next to that, oh, let me move through. We've got my uh, Ataba Poenzi, also the bottom part of the pole. And it's showing a new shoot over here and here. So it will grow again and then I can put a new extension on it. So these are all of my plants on moss poles out here. And I kept them still in their pots down here so that I can still do chop and extends, right? Like, probably soonish over the next month I'll start chopping them and then I re-extend them um, or like once they reach the top I'm expecting that to happen quite quickly now that spring is approaching uh, so I don't want to put them in the ground because that bottom half is not here to stay I want to keep working with the top half and then you know so it would kind of be annoying because I would have to dig it out every half a year so I might as well just keep it in a pot that way I can also move them around uh, and display them nicely I'm also thinking I might move them a little bit closer together and then add a few more poles uh, once spring comes from from the uh, from the inside if they're a bit closer, they'll kind of protect each other and create better humidity uh, and they'll shade each other as well. I'm actually more worried about the middle of summer and how hot and how sunny it might get. Um, so I feel like if I move them a bit closer together, they'll shade each other um, and wind won't really bash them around as much as well. But not in a position to do that at the moment because I don't want to take any of my plants inside out uh, while it's still kind of suboptimal out here. All right, then next to it, all of these little plants down here, they're even blooming. Like I didn't, I didn't uh, plant them, they were already here. But what I planted was this um, billy over here I planted, still alive. This little siltipicana that I planted over here, also kind of still alive. The micans, not so alive, but Brad likes to lie exactly here. So he keeps smashing that plant, <laughs> but whatever. Um, over here I've got a Cupria that seems to have a mealy bug on here. Bye. 
Okay, whatever. And over here I've got a green velvet that is also not doing the greatest, but I just wanted to survive winter so that it can thrive in summer or spring. Right, let's go. Let's. Alrighty, then down here we've got my trio star. It's doing okay. Um, some marantas over here. It did grow a new leaf. Look at it. So, don't worry. You'll be surprised. Spring is coming and they'll be back with a vengeance, I think. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, the bird of paradise over here, I've got the big version of it and then I've got the small version. The small version is actually flowering, which is nice. And here's a new one coming. I didn't plant a bird of paradise. They were already here when I, when I moved in, quite clearly. This wouldn't have grown in six months. So, um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this plant. And then my Maranta down below. Yeah, it's not looking the happiest, but honestly, this is exactly what I was expecting it to do during winter. Um, yeah. Next to that, we've got a few crawlers down there. We've got a Mame and a Silver Cloud, and they're still alive, so yay. Over here is a random Anthurium. I don't even remember its name, but you can see there's two new shoots coming. So there's a shoot here and there's a shoot here. So I think it's waking up from dormancy. My Monstera in the background isn't doing anything yet. And my Gloriosum over here is also not looking the happiest. The Dean, this one over here, is okay. And I can see a new shoot coming out the back as well, but still early days. These are some plants that um, Tim brought back. So these were all plants that used to be in my, my apartment, or no, used to be in my house, my shared house like three years ago. And then when I moved into my apartment, not this one, the one before that, I didn't have any outdoor space. So I gave them all to Tim, but because they're redoing their garden at the moment, they all had to go. And I was like, well, don't worry, I'll take them back. <laughs> um, so we've got a, I think a Kentia palm. I believe. Um, don't remember this name. And this is a thermatophyllum bipenophyllum. Yep, that one. So, yeah, happy days. I don't know. Not that much to say about it. And then I've got my new, my new furniture that I got the other day. Uh, and it's been so nice when the sun is out and uh, it's a nice a nice day it's been so nice taking full advantage of the courtyard and actually being able to sit here and enjoy my life now behind it we've got a golden cane palm and this is some sort of jade tree um, i haven't done anything with them yet they definitely need a repot they're still in the pot that i gave them about four to five years ago so they're definitely in need for a repot, but I'm just waiting another month or so until um, the weather is a little bit better. So I know that it's going to recover from any sort of repotting activities much quicker. Right, let me show you this as well. It's a cute little Monstera. It's a Monstera Del Deliciosa Brazil form or Brazilian form. And I haven't given it a moss paw because I kind of like it being small. I kind of like this little cute uh, display, so it still fits on here. All right, let me maybe show you what I've got here. I've got a Calithia Washevichii, Washevichii, yep, <laughs> um, from Bunnings. I want to put this in the ground, but I'm waiting another month or so. got a ZZ Raven. It is incredibly root bound. Like the whole pot has deformed based on the roots and the, the little bulbs in here. So it's in desperate need for a repot. But again, I'm just waiting one more month and then I'll do like a big repot out here for all of the plants that need it and might pop a few more plants in the ground as well. But quite interesting what I wanted to show you. I don't know if you've seen my plant shopping tour with AJ. Um, we collected a little bit of moss from the growers and I just popped it in that box and it's just been living out here and it's thriving. And look, oh my God, I wish you could feel it. It's so 
soft. So I'm just growing this for maybe like some potential terrarium uh, projects in the future. Happy days. All right, these are my two canna lilies. We've got the Stuttgart and we've got the Cleopatra. Um, now, they, I was expecting them to go fully dormant during winter. Kind of gone dormant, right? Like, they're not growing, and obviously these leaves that grow in over March, April are deteriorating pretty quickly. They don't have a really long lifespan, even, uh, even in spring, but they grow so fast that it kind of outgrows like they grow more leaves than the old leaves are dying usually. But just wanted to show you, it is ready for spring. Have a look at the pot over here. New shoot here, new shoot, new shoot, a new shoot. And I think that's it. Four, four new shoots for now, but I'm sure there's gonna be more coming. So. Give it another month or so, um, and if the temperatures are continuously increasing, it's just going to be back with a vengeance. So, I'm excited. Alrighty, and then in this kind of garden area over here, this little garden bed, it's the emptiest garden bed still at the moment. And the idea is that I think at the, towards the fence, I want to maybe put a few heliconias that can grow really nice and tall and kind of hide that ugly fence. And then in front of it, I want to have, I've got some canna lilies. So these are some propagations of my Cleopatra that I've done at the beginning um, of, of autumn or like in autumn. And they're still okay. I've got some Esculenta over here. Um, what else do I have? I have a Calla lily over here that's even blooming, which is pretty crazy given that it's winter at the moment. Uh, I mean, maybe they do bloom in winter. And I have another, you cannot really see this, but there's another canna lily over here, this brown thing that I put in the ground. And it has shown a new shoot over here. So when I put up these canna lilies, I'm not expecting the old shoot to regrow, but it's gonna send out new shoots over here. So the idea behind this garden bed is that it's gonna have a whole lot of alocasias, colocasias, cal canna lilies, calla lilies, and hopefully some uh, haliconias in the back as well. So they're all kind of water loving plants. Um, so I can water this quite frequently and they'll appreciate it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the idea. See how we go. I have a whole lot of uh, alocasias in propagation at the moment and I wanna just put them out here and create like a really nice lush tropical garden. Alrighty, but enough about the garden. Despite the fact that I'm in a t-shirt, it's actually kind of coldish out here right now, specifically if the sun is disappearing. So let's take it inside where most of the magic is happening or where at least the plants are much happier over the colder season. Come on in. Hello, Brad. Coming in with us, yeah? Good. Alrighty, this is the first corner of my indoor jungle and you guys are still outside in my garden um, and there's like a big west facing sliding door and that door is quite tall as well. I think it's like about two meters tall, which enabled me to finally have plants that are taller than 180 centimeters. So normally my moss pots are 180 centimeters. It's just a convenient height to get them through the doorways, to take them outside for, um, for a wash and so on. But now that I have larger doors, I can have larger moss piles. So I've got my Adansonii over here and my Dubia on the very right. Honestly, it's actually so far in the corner, I hardly get to see it. Um, and they're both, well, I'm 180 tall. I'm here, by the way. They're 180 tall, so they're probably, the piles are probably like, what, two meters and something? Now, let's start with the Dubia over here, maybe. Halfway through winter, I noticed that the, there's two shoots on here and I noticed that the top shoot is gonna hit the top of the moss pot pretty quickly and I really didn't want to do a chop and extend during winter. I just chopped it just to stop the plant from growing too fast, if that makes sense. I try to propagate the top cutting, but top cutting specifically if they're unrooted, I'm always having a really hard time uh, rooting them so it kind of just rotted away but it just bought me a little bit more time um, and got the gave the second shoot a little bit more time to catch up the second shoot has now actually overtaken 
It's growing a new leaf over here. Oh, it looks a bit damaged. Who knows? Um, all right, and then next to it, we've got my Adansonii, one of my all-time favorites. Over here, I didn't actually decide to chop the top. I actually uh, ripped it by accident. So I wanted to kind of have this top shoot move towards the middle of the moss pole. And as I was kind of manipulating it, I just snapped the top off, which worked out really, really well because that top shoot then gave me two new growth points, one here and one over here. So now I have two plants climbing up and I'm not too sure what this is over here. If you look, I'm not too sure if this is an inflow maybe or what exactly this is. I'm, I'm honestly a bit, I don't know, we'll find out. So that top shoot has now turned into two, but I actually initially had three shoots on here. So if we're looking further down here, and sorry, it's such a mess in here. This is the second shoot over here. Whoop, and this is the third shoot over here. And they are kind of reverting back to being smaller. Honestly, I think it's just because they're not getting enough light because the big plant, the main shoot, is kind of just taking over and shading everything else. So given that shoot number two and three are kind of struggling a little bit at the moment, it's actually worked out really well that the top shoot has now split into two. All right, and then next to it, we've got my um, Mandula pothos. Now, this big leaf, and that's my favorite leaf, that was the last leaf that unfurled in my old apartment where I had so much more sun. It was getting a lot of direct sun, specifically in the morning. When I then moved in here, it started reverting to become a little bit smaller, which, you know, could be, first of all, because it's getting less light, but also could just be because of shock, right? When the plant's environment changes, uh, the plant just goes through a little bit of shock and needs to reestablish itself. And then obviously we we're also heading towards winter. So the plant growth was further stunted. So I still really like the leaves. I think with these leaves, because of the amazing variegation and like the pattern and everything, size in itself isn't really all too important, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how this plant will develop over spring and summer, if I can get it back to um, the biggest leaves like these, or if it might get even bigger but still a really beautiful specimen also I only have one vine on this pole over here so it might be a consideration to maybe propagate it and have two or three vines growing up that moss pole to make it a little lusher down below we've got my monstera Thai constellation I recently repotted it and I can't see any signs of new growth since the repot but I also can't see any signs of it being unhappy so Specifically with Monsteras, what I've noticed when I do a repot, after the repot, they spend a lot of time re-establishing a root system, really filling out the pot. And then usually once it's pot bound, that's when it starts pushing out new leaves. So let's see, I'll give it another couple of months or so, but at this stage, not concerned. Right, moving through. Let's start with these ones first. So this is my Oxalis, one of my all-time favorites. Let me move back a little bit because the direct sun is not really good for filming. So usually they can go dormant during winter. And given that I get way less sun and it's not as warm in this apartment and in my old apartment, I was expecting it to actually go dormant. It hasn't gone dormant, but it's definitely decreased in leaf size if you compare it to its uh, prime in like spring and summer. But that's okay. I mean, if it's that lush in winter, I really can't wait for spring, yay. Remember when I said I have a whole lot of alocasias in propagation for the garden? Here we go. And I'm filming a, um, a separate video on that process as well. So if it's successful and they end up in my garden, you will see a specific video about these. This is my Anthurium Crazy Rubbish, my own little hybrids that I made from my um, Wild Crystallinum, and I just recently repotted that and I uploaded that as well. And as part of the repot, I got rid of all of the larger ones. So there were four or five large ones that really outgrew everything else. So I isolated them and I'm growing them separately. And that way the large leaves aren't shading all the smaller ones. So they should have a better time now. I'm just hoping to create a really nice lush display. And then lastly, if you remember my video 
where I was chopping up my queen and I gave it like a major chop. Uh, I propagated four or five uh, chunks and I put two in just a plastic box over here. Uh. All right, the first one, and there's two chunks in here. Uh, one of the chunks has given me this beautiful cute leaf and then the second one is also giving me its first new shoot, but not a leaf yet. Right, I've got another one. This one only has one trunk, chunk in it and it has also given me a cute new leaf. So I'll just pop that back in the box. I put the lid on and honestly, I, I just set and forget. I do nothing for it. I think I watered it once in two months because I keep the lid on. Sometimes I leave the lid open a little bit just for a little bit of aeration. But because the lid is on, it's really humid in there and there's not many leaves to take up all of the water, to use all of that water. There's very little watering requirement over here. So just set and forget and they're loving it. Right. Let me put all of that back. Alrighty, and then behind all of these moss poles, I've got a little shelf set up and I've got a hanging grow light over here. It's from Soltech and I've got a discount code for you and I've got a full video where I review that product as well. So that will be linked in the description if you want to learn more about the light. But I'm really, really loving the light because it unlocked this whole corner over here. It's not getting any, or less, it's very, getting very, very minimal natural light because all of these moss poles right in front of it are just absorbing all of the light. Specifically with all of these large leaves, there's not much light coming through. So without the grow light, this corner would kind of be a bit sad, but with the grow light, I was able to really grow these beautiful skindapses. And have a look at this, like they're even increasing in leaf size uh, down here. Skindapses seem to really don't mind uh, some darker conditions and there's so many new growth points everywhere new leaves so it's gonna get really really lush um, really excited for that then on the top I've got my Agleonema agglomena I don't know people pronounce it differently in my review video of the grow light I also mentioned that these older leaves over here they grew up in really dark conditions so when I gave it the grow light they kind of burned a little bit but these newer leaves are more than happy with the new light conditions. So, yeah, let's see how it goes. And then at the top, I'm sorry, I'm way too lazy. I don't want to get up. At the top over here, I've got my uh, ring of fire. So it has grown some really beautiful leaves with really beautiful variegation um, and I did put it on a moss pole, on a grow vertical moss pole, and you can really see it is definitely a climber. It's not climbing really fast, but it is definitely climbing up that moss pole and attaching and rooting into the moss pole. And then this <sighs> is my favorite at the moment. This is Alocasia Jacqueline, and it just came out of dormancy, the Soltec light got it out of dormancy and just look at that pattern and when I turn it around it has beautiful backs as well and it's gonna be hard to film that I don't know if you can see that but can you see the texture on that it has like almost like really little fine hair when you and when you feel it it sounds rough as well right ASMR and I'm obsessed with this plant at the moment. I think it's so nice. It just needs maybe a few more leaves than just one. But given that this was just a stump about a month ago, and this is its first leaf, and we're still in August, excited. And another plant brought to you by my Soltech Grow Lights, this time it's just a light bulb in an IKEA lamp, uh, is my variegated Monstera over here. And it has grown these leaves over winter so really really happy with that um, and specifically i'm excited for the potential because it's growing a huge root system so i reckon once spring hits it's gonna exploit all right have a look at these roots and how they're ferociously root into that moss pile all the way down i mean you can see it's really messy there's a lot of roots 
not all of the routes are taking full advantage of the moss pole. You know, some go in and some go out again, but that's okay. If you consider how many routes are going from the stem into the moss pole, just by squeezing the moss pole, I can tell that there is a lot of roots within the moss pole. So having a couple hang around, that's perfectly fine. That's okay. All right, over here, I just got a little Adansonii. I don't want it to mature. I want it to kind of just crawl and produce these cute little leaves. Um, and I've got this shelf new, and I think it's really nice. I think it's really making a huge difference in this space. You guys know how I feel about rearranging and like, you know, making my home really nice. Uh, you know, that brings a lot of joy to me. And as part of that, I like to also get uh, new furniture, or upgrade my furniture uh, every now and then. And yeah, I really like this one for my Kia. All right, then going in a circle, we've got my Mykins over here. Now this plant went flying the other week. Um, based on the big window over here, and then I had the window open in my bedroom, and then there was just a bit of a draft, and this plant just went flying. So you can see that there's a lot of damage on the top half over here. The bottom half is looking really nice though. So come spring, I'll give this a chop, and then I'll give it an extension, I'll probably extend the bottom and I keep growing the bottom and that will definitely go outside. It was outside at the beginning when I first moved in. So I think it spent March and half of April outside and it was loving it. But then it was kind of getting too cold so I took it back inside. But I know this plant is dying to go back outside, I think, projecting. Alrighty, IKEA cabinet. Lots happening in here. I'm currently rescuing this uh, varicosum and look at it. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, seven shoots going on at the moment. So I think it's just a matter of time until this is really, really lush. But I'm working on a separate video of that. The queen is doing well. I'm not going to take her out. She's a little bit too big, but she's rooting really well after the uh, huge chop that I gave her a couple of months ago. Third time lucky. I'm trying to grow a variegated Adansonii for the third time. And so far, this is doing the best. See, this is like half white, half green. That's what I want. This was attempt number two. Wasn't successful. And attempt number one is dead. Right, what else can I point out over here? This is my Philodendron rugosum. It is getting a little bit too big for the cabinet and it's getting a little bit too big for its pot. See how thick the stem has gotten and like these chunky roots? I definitely want to put it on a pole, but to put it on a pole, I need to start moving it out of the cabinet. And I think if I just wait another month before I move it out of the cabinet, it will be a great success. I got this as the tiniest seedling for my birthday last year. Let me put in a photo for you. It's honestly crazy to me how much this plant has grown. Some other smaller plants, but I'm working on a lot of specific videos for those. Maybe just one more that I want to point out is my El Choco, which is one of my absolute favorites at the moment. And that's growing without a pot at the moment. It's just growing on that pole. And have a look in the back, there's a new leaf coming and I just think these new leaves unfurling are so nice with their red backs like this. That's I suppose where it got the name from. All right, let's close this off. A lot of projects coming that are currently still in here. During winter, I could not appreciate the cabinet more, specifically if I get smaller plants during winter. Um, they're having a really, really good time in here. So I really like, I think it's the single best thing I've ever done in my plant journey to get one of those because all of my small plants just go in there. They have a really easy time recovering from any shock if they were shipped to me or uh, from a repot and so on. And then once they're really happy, I can start potting them up into bigger pots, put them on a moss pot and then start moving them into uh, my bedroom or my office and so on. But right now, while it's still dark and cold and you know, I'm trying to keep them in there as long as I can, um, but a lot of them have outgrown it. So I think next month or so, I can start taking a lot of these outside. Now, next to that, I've got my El Salvador and it is quite happy. So what happened over here, if you wanna come closer, Last time I did a chop and extend, this was the top part and this was the bottom part of the pole. Right? So instead of just taking the top part and extending it, I actually put the top part, I put it up next to the bottom part and then I extended the top. 
Now what happened is that bottom part reshot in a lot of different spaces and these shoots are now slowly finding their way themselves onto that extension. So that eventually I'll have three, four, five shoots growing up that moss pole. However, the main shoot has already reached the top. So I might need to give that a trim, give the other shoots a bit of time to catch up. But it's growing so nicely with amazing fenestration. So uh, I just don't know if I actually want to chop it at the moment. I'm so happy with the leaves that it's giving me, but it's a little empty. I love the bushy look at the bottom where I have five, six, seven, I don't even know how many shoots there are anymore, but it's giving me a really nice lush display, whereas the top is just more like beautiful leaves, but less of them. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe I should chop it and put it back to the bottom again. So I have triple planted pole. I don't know. I don't know. It's definitely something to work out in spring. For now, I'm just happy with the growth that it has given me uh, over winter. Righty, moving into the kitchen. We've got my lush mixed pot of alocasias and honestly I don't know what went wrong but one of them had crazy root rot and basically is now just a stump. That's the silver dragon and this is already the second time the silver dragon has done that. Um, should be easy like Last time when it happened, it didn't really even drop a leaf. It just re-rooted uh, re re and then I potted it back up and it just was fine. Um, but I don't understand. They're all in the same mix. They're all getting the same treatment. They're getting the same watering. They're getting the same conditions. So I'm not too sure what I've done wrong. There wasn't really a lesson here for me, unfortunately. Maybe the lesson is just that the silver dragon is a bit of a I don't know. But... Nevertheless, I like this display. I think it's looking really nice, but a lot of them are quite root bound and probably in desperate need for a repot. But again, it's probably a spring thing. I'm just waiting another month or so to give everybody the best chances of overcoming the stress that a repot um, would induce. Alrighty, I've got a little propagation of my variegated monstera. That's a propagation from the big plant you saw earlier over here. And I experimented with a different filling on that pole over here. So this is filled with cocoa chips and it is definitely attaching to it. If you come a bit closer, it's definitely attaching to it. So you can see that there are definitely roots. And uh, let me show you the other side. Some roots are going into the pole and um, I don't know if it's visible because this hole is not see-through, but you can see some roots over here, I think. I don't know if the camera picks up on it, but you can see that it has definitely rooted into the pole. Now, I don't like the coca chips that much because when I water it, it just goes everywhere. I'm having a hard time watering it neatly. And secondly, and I can't speak from my experience, but AJ uh, from Growing Grounds has used coca chips uh, much more frequently and for a longer time already and she has experienced a lot of plants kind of bleaching, getting really light, getting really yellowish uh, due to nutrient deficiency. So I believe that the coca chips absorb too much calcium. So the plant is calcium deficient, I think. Anyway, uh, same happened to Tim from Grow Vertical um, and AJ and Tim are really two, two of the most experienced growers that I know. So if they say that the coca chips aren't really uh, like, let's say good, um, then uh, I trust them. Instead, I think you'd be better off doing an aeroid mix in your pole um, or tree fern fiber if you can't get your hand on moss poles. Alrighty, this is my Syngonium Styamachii. Really happy with that. And then over here, it's a variegated syngonium. Just a couple of propagations that I popped in here a couple of weeks ago uh, because I want to try out this new type of grow vertical moss pole. But um, I filled it with tree fern fiber and it's very messy. So far, not happy. Should have probably filled it with moss instead because that's a little bit uh, less, less messy. Yeah, I'm not really sold on the look of it either. I much prefer these older grow verticals with the eco green plastic backing. I think they look 
a little bit nicer. I mean, it's still, I'm trying, I, I, I prefer my open moss poles because they just look nicer and I don't have all too much plastic floating around in my apartment. Uh, but I think the eco green one is kind of a good compromise. Alrighty, and then right in front of you, I've got my Syngonium Mojito. And I've had this for a while now as well. And I told you I don't have the desire to make it grow up a moss pile. I really wanted to have this nice lush display. Uh, so I put a bunch of propagations. All of this at the front are some propagations that I added into the pot um, recently. So I'm just waiting for them to um, reshoot. And I'm really loving these new leaves with their pattern, but that pattern fades over time and then they just kind of become greenish. But yeah, I'm really liking that. Do you have anything to say? Mm. Okay. Yes, that's his favorite spot up here on the shelf. So the idea was that I used this shelf for my plants, but he uh, took ownership of this part of the shelf at least. Yes, huh? Oh my God, you're so cute. It's almost five o'clock, my baby. All right, let's move through to the next room. So it's quite a small room, so um, I can't have all too many plants in here, but let's have a look at them a little bit closer. So on this side, and I think this side of the room needs a little bit more work. I really don't like this shelf, but I've already had it, so I might as well use it. So this is kind of my anthurium shelf, but I'm really hoping that I can move most of my anthuriums into my greenhouse in spring. This is my Vitarifolium. It's happy as ever, and it's also Grown three inflows at the moment. I've got a Clarinervium over here with literally the longest petioles in history. I'm not too sure what's going on here, but I just repotted this recently and a new leaf is already coming. A Magnificum over here, a Crystallinum over here, despite it looking kind of sad, it's giving me an inflow. These are these larger propagations of my anthurium uh, uh, hybrids that I made myself, the crazy rubbish ones. So these are the larger ones that are isolated so that the rest isn't getting all too shaded. And I potted them up and you can already see lots of tiny little roots sticking out here. And look at this cute new leaf. And this is another one. Same here, you can see all of these roots. Nice, success. Alrighty, then this is a Puppy X Dresslery, I think. Uh, super nice and dark. And look at this sheen, beautiful. And also giving me an inflow. It's, they've all grown so many inflows recently, but I just chop all of them. This is a Clarinervium hybrid and it's not super happy at the moment. Looks like it might've had a little bit of root rot. YOLO. Another Clarinervium over here. My, um, what's it called again? Vichii. New Vichii leaf here. I've had this for so many years and I grew this from seed and it's honestly just never exceeded anything this size. I'm not too sure. This is another Clarinervium hybrid that AJ gave me for Christmas and it's also growing really nice dark leaves. This is another propagation of my um, Queen Anthurium. And another Magnificum over here. Honestly, my Anthuriums have taken the move the worst. They definitely did not appreciate the new environment. And for the first two or three months, everything just went down here. And only recently things have started picking up again. Right, let's skip the ones in the middle for now. I'll talk about these in a sec when because I need to back up a little bit more so you can see them properly. But in this corner over here, I've got my forest from Mother and I've just done a full video on my four month progress of this, uh, including a review. So you can have a look at this, but uh, really loving these skin depths over here. Can't wait for them to trial. And my carnivorous plant is also growing one leaf after the other. However, it's not giving me pictures and the existing one are just drying out. I think the humidity is just not good enough. See how they're, they're here, but they're not doing anything. And eventually they kind of just dry out like this one over here. So I think it's a humidity thing. However, if you've grown carnivorous plants, um, 
and you know what the issue is, please let me know. I would love to grow a few more pictures. Down here is another mixed pot of anthurium seedlings. Um, these were not my own hybrids, a friend made them. They're Magnificum hybrids, but he gave me a bunch of seeds and I just potted them all up in one big pot. And I'm loving this lush display with different colors, like the reds, the oranges, the greens. I think it's really nice. And then there's another one over here. These ones I made myself and they were Magnificum mixed with a forgetty eye, I believe, yes. See, he's kind of getting like some close sinus action over here. Alrighty, now let's focus on the thing in the middle. So first of all, I've got my two mother lights over here and I just screwed them on top of each other. And a lot of people has, uh, have asked me how. So you know how they normally, oop, oh my God, sorry, cable management. You know how they normally come with that little disc down here? Well, to screw the light into the disc, it came with this little screw. So what I've done is I just unscrewed the top, you know, the top over here, I just unscrewed that and then put the screw in from, the, from, from below and then screwed it back in. So there's like the screw sticking out here and then I can just twist them on top of each other. I hope that made sense. Sorry, I would love to show you, but I've cable tied this all so securely together that I'm just kind of gonna make a mess if I try and undo it. Alrighty, over here we've got another version of my Anthurium Crazy Rubbish. And this is a seedling that I, um, that I separated from the very beginning. So instead of growing them all in the same pot, this one was in my IKEA cabinet. So it's by far the most advanced uh, out of all of them because it was given more room. And you can see it has like a decent root system. Uh, so it's now throwing out this new leaf over here. And I'm really excited to see how big it can get. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it had its first teeny tiny inflow already, so nice. But at the moment I'm cutting out uh, all the inflows because I just feel like they're gonna take up energy and I have no desire to make any hybrids in, at the moment. This is the mother plant of that Anthurium crazy rubbish, right? So um, this is, uh, it was sold to me as Anthurium wild crystallinum. I'm not too sure what makes it so wild. So what it was crossed with to call it wild crystallinum. Uh, why don't they just call it based on whatever parentage was used? Anyway, it's one of my, it's what was my very first Anthurium I ever bought and it's still one of my favorites. And it's currently pushing out a new leaf over here. That's kind of pointing in the wrong direction, but given that the wrong direction is actually the direction I'm facing most of the time, I'm kind of excited to have one leaf that's looking at me and all the other leaves look outside. Alrighty, that is already it for the bedroom. There isn't, it's a tiny room, so there isn't all too much in here. So let's move on through to the next room. Alrighty, this is my Monstera Dubia. This is the Dubia that I initially grew without a pot. Uh, I don't know if you remember that experiment. By now I have given it a pot, but I can't see any roots in that pot. So I think the pot is just decoration at this stage. And the plant is still maturing, even giving me fenestrations now. So you don't need a pot. Like the, the moss pot is the pot. The moss is the growing medium. So yeah, happy days. A ripsalis over here. I don't think it's getting like enough light for it to really grow, but it's not deteriorating. So, and yeah, I really like this display over here. And then I've got a little syngonium over here. I don't know. Okay, this is not really gonna thrive over here, but that's not the point. I just didn't want to have an empty corner. So I'll put a plant in here that I absolutely don't care about. <laughs> Alrighty, but let's move through to probably my favorite room, which is my office. Alrighty, and this is my favorite room, my office slash plant room. Um, and it's probably quite obvious why I love this room so much. This is where all of my large moss poles, uh, specifically my velvet philodendron live. So let's quickly kind of go through them and let's start off with the only one that's not velvet. Or actually, it's two not velvet. This one is uh, Berlamark's Fantasy. And you can see when I first got it, it had these tiny leaves at the bottom over here. And then as it grows up, this grow vertical moss pole, it has just increased in leaf size to some decent sized leaves now. And 
I reckon the footage is probably really weird because the sun is kind of coming through but it's kind of like sun shade, sun shade and so on. So I hope everything is okay. Uh, I hope the visibility is okay. Um, let's completely ignore my varicosum because it's a bit of a sore spot at the moment. Let's move on to some happier news. This is my Philodendron Milano Chrysum and it's finally giving me decent leaves. It's been about three and a half years in the making. And I finally have some of the leaves that I'm really after and I can't wait for it to mature further but of course it's just reached the top of its moss pollen and it needs a chop. <sighs> it's really hard to beat the sheen of these leaves. I mean just look at how beautiful and dark they are. It's gonna get a little darker like this one. Uh, this uh, leaf over here is still quite new. This, this leaf over here is uh, maybe like a month or a month and a half old. There's a second shoot down here as well right here that's also pushing out a new leaf. Next to it we've got Philodendron Glorious. So Philodendron Glorious and Milano look quite similar. That's because Milano is one of the parents of Philodendron Glorious. The other parent is Philodendron Gloriosum. Very... Hang on, one moment, look at Brad. <laughs> he wants oh. to get to the cat grass so badly. Yes, my baby, I'll take it down for you. Here you go. You can eat some of the cat grass, yeah? While daddy's filming the rest of the video. Deal. He was desperate to get to it. Alrighty, I think I was just saying that Philodendron, the second parent of Philodendron Glorious is Philodendron Gloriosum. I don't know who named them. The names are way too similar and people are getting really confused about it because I get questions almost on a daily how I managed to grow my Philodendron Gloriosum up a moss pole. I didn't. This is Philodendron Glorious and the Milano parentage makes it a climber. This plant is going absolutely crazy. So as it matures, it starts having really small internodal spacing. So it's not climbing really fast and look how thick the stem is and I can't really manipulate it anymore. It's just kind of going around the moss pole now instead of actually climbing in a straight line. But look how happy it is. It's even giving me an inflow over here. This bit over here that's kind of hidden there, that's an inflow. So it's definitely happy, happy, happy. Oh, and I definitely need to water this. Now all of these lower leaves down here, as I said, because the plant isn't growing that fast anymore and it's not really climbing up the moss pretty quickly, these older leaves are really old. They're all pre-moved. They're like almost, they probably were a year old by the time I moved, right? So these are definitely slowly, deterior, slowly deteriorating in, in looks, but that's okay. Um, it's definitely due for a chop soon. But the new leaves that have grown since the move in this new environment are, are beautiful. Are just perfect. Like, mwah. So it's definitely happy. But obviously it's normal to have the older leaves kind of deteriorate a little bit. Specifically given it's winter, they went through a move and they're just old. With all of my plants that are quite large and it applies to basically those three over here specifically because they get really long petioles, they start spreading like crazy. Like I could fill the whole wall just with that one plant. So I need to manage that to, to fit more plants in here. So all of these plants kind of just are tied together using a bit of twine or sometimes I use a bit of wire just to kind of manage all of these long petioles. Got my Sodiroy over here, and my Sodiroy is also throwing out a new leaf. And what's quite special about the Sodiroy compared to the other plants is that it's still on its first moss pole, and it's been about two and a half to three years. If we're moving in a bit closer. You can see that this plant has really, really small internodal spacing, and these petioles, see how they just go left, right, and center, and like are really quite long so this has a crazy spread so I need to kind of manage these petioles so that it's a little more compact and I can fit more plants on the same wall. Same goes for my splendid, this is the newest splendid leaf over here, it's looking mighty fine. Um, it's definitely reached the top of its moss pole and needs an extension soon but again these petioles spread this far. And first of all, it doesn't look good. Second of all, I have less room for plants. And thirdly, if the petioles are like everywhere, if I arrange them, if I move one plant out, that petiole is just taking three poles with it. It's like domino day. So it's good for me to kind of manage them, keep them more compact. Um, yeah, I don't know. And look at the new sleeve over here. It's definitely happy. It's a happy cow. Beautiful. 
And it also had an inflow. I just had to chop it uh, maybe like, I think yesterday or the day before because it was getting a bit manky. Look at my baby eating the cat grass. Oh, I'm so happy. It's the most useful thing I ever grew. All right, he's busy out there, so we can focus on these plants down here. Alrighty, I've got my gigas over here, and I've done the same with the gigas that I've done with my um, El Salvador that we saw earlier. So there was the bottom part and the top part of the moss pole, and then I extended, I put them together and extended uh, them together. And now the top part has grown a new shoot, the bottom part has grown a new shoot, and both of these shoots are now finding their way towards that new extension. So eventually I'll have two plants growing on that extension. And these new leaves are looking quite nice. I hope the light is okay. All right, next to it, we've got one of my pride and joys, my Alocasia cupria. And I mean, it's probably clear why it's my pride and joy. And if I turn it around, it's quite bushy and I get asked a lot, how do you hold on to so many leaves? How did you grow it so large? Honestly, it's a bit of a miracle to me as well. You've seen my other alocasias earlier, and they're all pretty much the same age. And they started off as really small plants. I put in a photo of how small this plant was when I first got it. And it just kind of grew. Like, it just likes me. I don't know. And I like it back. Uh, it's the only alocasias I really had no issues with. Um, but it's also uh, three years old, right? So they, did, they didn't just grow that large uh, within a season or so, right? It's uh, three years of continuous growth that enabled it to get that large. Recently, it's just been pushing out inflow after inflow, and I'm just like, give me leaves. Um, but that's life, you know, you don't always get what you want. Down here, we've got my uh, Plaumaniae. Let me maybe lift it up. That is my only crawler that I have not put in the garden. And I just recently repotted it and I caused a whole lot of damage when I repotted it because it was so root bound. I had to kind of really rip it out of its existing pot. Uh, so it's still in recovery stage, but I have hopes. <laughs> All right, Brad is just exploring out there. So maybe we can focus on this corner. And I hope this is all kind of okay visible. Uh, I've got a begonia and it's growing. I'm so happy that it's actually doing something and it even has flowers. So that's nice. It's one of these begonias. If you look at them in the dark with flash on it, uh, kind of shows blue. So yeah. This year I want to try a few new things. So I thought I'll get into begonias. This is my Shazza, a Philodendron Sharonii. It's not doing all too much. This is my philodendron tenu, and I've had this plant for one year and all of the leaves that you can now see, they have grown in that one year. They are slowly increasing in leaf size, but honestly, it's nothing super, super impressive, right? So I also have plants that aren't thriving initially. It's still, uh, it's a marathon, right? It's not a sprint. So don't get discouraged if your plants aren't thriving immediately. So this is philodendron esmeraldense. Um, also a newer edition, I don't know, you can probably see a theme like the Shazza, the Tenu, this one, they're all kind of like non-velvet, ripply uh, plants. I had like this moment sometime last year when I feel like I needed to buy all of these plants and now they're all on moss poles and they're slowly starting their journey. So maybe in two years time, they'll be there <laughs> on the big wall. Over here, I've got a little Majestic. So Majestic is a hybrid of Sodiroy and Vericosum. So it has beautiful red backs as well. And these are just some small propagations I've taken off my big mother plant. The big mother plant was just getting way too big. So I just chopped it all up. So I think there's like three or four little plants in here, but yeah, I actually don't want this to mature. I want this to stay nice and small because as this plant matures, it's losing its silver. We've got the banana, I might just show you that over here, so the colors come out a little bit better. Uh, this is my blood banana. It's the moist leaves it ever had. I'm really happy, it looks like a banana, right? Um, unfortunately, as the leaves get older, the red variegation is kind of fading, yep. but look how beautiful the variegation is on these new leaves. So, yeah, really happy about this. I was surprised, I thought it would probably really like like the outside where it gets a lot of sun but not at all it actually prefers some shady conditions if you give it too much sun the red variegation is completely gonna fade 
I also have two of my mother grow lights over here. I think they're just so elegant and such a nice solution to just provide further light for this wall. Because what I'm trying to achieve here is I'm trying to be able to look at my plants at the same time as the plants are growing, right? So with these plants over here, for example, the problem is that for them to grow, I need to make the leaves face the window, which means I kind of just look at it from the back. They still look nice from the back, right? Like you still see something but ultimately they're never gonna look as nice from the back as they look from the front. So with these big leaves, like, you know, I, I wanna see them from the front. I don't wanna just look at moss poles with a whole lot of roots. So I want them to be against the wall, but being against the wall means that, means that they're the furthest away from the window. So I put these grow lights kind of in the middle of the room to just supplement the light over here. And again, I took two of the mother lights and I just screwed them on top of each other. Now with this one, I actually also screwed them on top of each other and it's gonna get bright for you, sorry. I didn't screw them on top of each other like straight. I kind of just put them off center a little bit so that the top light is shining towards that splendid over here, but the bottom light is kind of shining towards that Sodiroy and the Jose Bueno down below. But, most of these plants were already here when we did the last houseplant tour. What's new this time is everything behind me. So in the meantime, I've built a greenhouse, but I have to be fair, I haven't done anything with the greenhouse so far. I popped in a few plants, but I kind of keep the windows open the whole time. I'm, ready, I'm waiting for spring to really uh, set it up properly, but let's have a closer look. Alrighty, Brett is done eating his grass. So maybe let's, oh, so maybe let's just start off with this over here. So I've got two sprout pots. They're from Sproutwell. That's the greenhouse company. And uh, I just got some cat grass and some catnip over here. Down here I was trying to grow a few herbs but that failed miserably and I think it's just a lack of airflow and also I used probably the poorest possible growing medium you could use. So a lesson learned. Um, apart from that, the problem I have with my greenhouse or like the problem I have with my courtyard is that I have no electricity outside. I'm working on it. I think I found a solution, but that means that I can't heat the greenhouse during winter. And it means that I also don't have a fan in here at the moment. So because I couldn't heat the greenhouse, it's really as cold in here as it is outside. And because I couldn't have a fan, there was no airflow. But what happens in the greenhouse? It is obviously more humid in the greenhouse than it is outside. And I didn't listen to my own advice. Cold and wet is a deadly combination. So it was just a little too cold and wet in here. And I think I caused a bit of fungal issues with some of my plants that I'm gonna show you in a second. So after I noticed that, I kind of just said, you know what, let's just keep the windows open. So these windows are open at all times at the moment and I'm just waiting for spring to come around so that I don't have to worry about the cold anymore. And once I've got my electricity sorted out here, then I can also have a fan in here. The lack of airflow is why I can't currently do with this greenhouse what I want to do. That wasn't a good sentence, was it? I can't do with this greenhouse what I want to do at the moment because there's a lack of airflow. There we go. Um, and obviously I, ca I, I now create airflow by just opening the windows, but that then kind of reduces the humidity again. So now it is pretty much exactly inside what it is outside as well. So anyway, at least they're sheltered from heavy rains at the moment. So it's not complete, completely useless, but I'm gonna do a big greenhouse spring setup uh, next month. So I'm getting some shelves, I'm getting some um, electricity sorted. Uh, I've got, what else did I get? I'm gonna get some flooring as well and so on. So I'm working on that and of course I'm gonna take you along. In the meantime, nothing in here is really thriving. Uh, some of it is kind of dead, but um, yeah. It's not this greenhouse fault. I haven't really put the effort into setting it up properly just yet. I was actually not planning on getting the greenhouse uh, until spring anyway, and then it just all happened a bit quicker than expected. And then obviously once I had it, I wanted to build it, but I wasn't really prepared. I wasn't really ready, um, but I will be next month and I can't wait. Something I've been thinking about a lot though is really that, you know, when it comes to this greenhouse, this is the first time I'm growing outside. It applies to my other courtyard that we started off with as well. This is the first time growing outdoors. This is the first time growing in a greenhouse. 
things are gonna go wrong. Yes, I could probably do a little bit more research into trying to prevent some issues, but I love making my own mistakes. I love learning my own lessons, kind of. So we're just gonna learn these lessons together, but I have no experience growing outside. I have no experience growing in greenhouses, so don't take any tips for me, first of all. Um, just come along the ride and see the mistakes I make so that hopefully you don't have to make them in case you are planning on growing outdoors as well. But very different to my indoor plant journey, right? I've been growing plants indoors for uh, almost three years by the time I decided to record my first YouTube video. So I had three years worth of experience that backs up everything that I say. I had three years of lessons learned that I can pass on. So when it comes to my indoor plants, I'm feeling pretty confident passing on some of my tips and tricks and my guidelines or, or principles to you. When it comes to the outside, don't listen to me, okay? Not yet, maybe next year or maybe the year after. Uh, so give me a little bit of time, but I hope you're still happy to come along the journey with me at least. But yeah, see how we go. Righty, over here we've got my Epipremnum panadum variegata. It was very upset at the beginning of um, winter and it dropped a whole lot of leaves down here below. But it kind of stopped dropping leaves now and yeah, now that it's coming back into spring, I have really, really high hopes for this plant. Uh, ooh, needs the water as well, definitely. Uh, but yeah, Epipremnums are, Epipremnum panatum is actually native to the northern parts of Australia. It's obviously much warmer and more humid, but I don't think we're too far removed from this plant feeling right at home over here. So I have great hopes for this in summer. Got a little regal shields over here. I mean, you can see that it's still growing, but ooh, oh my God. So uh, this was its winter growth. So obviously much smaller in size, um, but it's still growing. But look at the size of the stem. It's nice and thick. So I reckon just purely based on the stem size, there's a lot of potential in this plant. And it's just gonna explode, I've got the feeling. Alrighty, over here, just put a little table. This is not, uh, this is not here to stay. It's gonna change in spring. Um, but for now, I just got a few little cacti over here. And I've got a frangy penny tree uh, over here that's still propagating. I'm not too sure if it's alive, to be honest. We'll find out. And my viburnum, obviously I didn't plant them, but they've been thriving. Look at all of this new growth. And it's really nice because it's kind of covering the greenhouse a little bit. So two things, I hope that it can cover the greenhouse a little more to shade the greenhouse and also just to hide the greenhouse a little bit. So it's been just shy of six months of me living in this new apartment. I feel like I've done a lot of work on the gardens. I'm quite happy with the indoor setup at the moment as well. I feel like I can work on the indoor setup a little bit more, but the, really, the one thing I'm really waiting for, and I probably said it about 45 times in this video, is I'm really waiting for spring. So in about a month's time or so, the conditions outside should be pretty brilliant for a majority of my plants. So I'm then in a position to start moving some of these indoor plants outside, and then I can reassess how much room I've got inside, and then I can kind of rearrange again. So I think I just really need to stay patient for one more month and then I'm in a position to really shake things up again. Um, if you've watched any of my tours before, my apartment changes between every tour because I love change. I love moving things around. It is one of the fun parts of the hobby for me. Apart from my Billy, I think all plants have survived winter so far. Um, some of them might not be thriving to their best ability, but really for me, specifically after the move and inducing all of that shock, it was really just trying to get them through winter uh, and into spring. Now we're not fully done. Things can still go down here, but I'm pretty happy with um, what, how my plants have coped uh, with the conditions so far. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive tour of all of my plants inside and outside. Uh, I didn't count. If you counted how many plants I've got, please let me know. I stopped counting about two years ago, um, but it's probably about 150 or so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and leave a nice comment, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.